In recent years, smartphone photosensors have become similar in size to those in entry-level point-and-shoot cameras, but you cannot fit a good lens inside the thin body of a smartphone. So there is a depth of field adapter that allows you to use full-frame lens. But it works by projecting an image into the built-in screen, and then your camera still has to focus on that screen with a tiny built-in lens. So it lowers the quality of an image and is quite bulky. There are also smaller and easier to use attachable lenses. They create distortion chromatic aberrations and are not even close to the real camera lens in terms of image quality. Nearly two years ago, Xiaomi introduced the 12S Ultra concept, featuring an additional exposed sensor and a Leica amount for compatible Leica lenses. Reviewers praised its exceptional image quality, but there were only five devices made, and the price was a whopping 43K. Inspired by this concept, I decided to experiment with a random 1-inch sensor smartphone to achieve similar results. The good news is that this project costs 100 times cheaper, totaling around 400 so far. This includes a used smartphone with a decent hardware, up-to-date software and even some external lenses. So I removed the default 19mm ultra-wide lens from Sharp Aquos R6 to reveal its 1-inch type 20 megapixel sensor. Then I attached a C-mount, which is widely used in CCTV cameras. It's a perfect choice, considering the sensor size and flange focal distance, so that it doesn't make a smartphone's body much thicker. The only issue so far is that it seems like the built-in infrared filter glass in this particular smartphone has no anti-reflection coating. So when it gets a lot of light on wide open aperture, reflections create a purple tint around the center of an image. Thankfully, there's an easy solution for that. I'm using a plat field correction in post to get rid of it in just a few clicks. I hope it's possible to permanently fix it by replacing the built-in filter glass with an external anti-reflective UV infrared cut filter, which is already on its way from AliExpress. Now let's take a look at my newly acquired lens collection. There are two C-mount lenses. The first one is quite big and heavy Fuji 12.5mm f1.4. And this is much smaller Tamron 25mm f1.8, with a star-shaped aperture when half open. There's also an old Soviet Industar 50mm f3.5 that are used together with a simple C-mount to M42 adapter. There's even a tiny little no-name M12 lens that can be used with a C-mount to M12 adapter. Its main advantage is that it allows me to carry the smartphone in a pocket with a protected sensor. It also makes some nice macro shots. I'm planning to expand my collection of C-mount adapters, so you can suggest what mount should I get next. Now let's compare shots from the modified shop and some of these lenses to a recent photographer-focused Sony flagship Xperia 1 Mark V. We have a few indoor object shots with a low light background and a few daylight distance shots. The first notable advantage of an external lens is the ability to control aperture. It gives the freedom to set the desired depth of field and get a natural background blur which phone manufacturers usually try to emulate using software, but it's never perfect. However, now when we set the aperture and focus manually, we do say goodbye to our beloved autofocus. The only device I know that has a fully automatic built-in variable aperture is the Xiaomi 14 Pro, and I definitely will compare it to my modified Sharp in one of the next videos. So the next big thing is that each lens has its own unique style. Fuji Wide Open gives you a dreamy, swirly bokeh and a magical surface shining effect, the reason why some of you might love lenses like Helios 44. Compared to that, Tamron gives a very smooth background, but with a lovely bokeh balls. They make photos look like they were made with a real camera, and you can get a star-shaped bokeh lights when half open. Industar gives photos its low-contrast film look and a distant vintage vibe. Looking at the details, Tamron and Industar leave no chance for Sony's telephoto module in distance shots. Tamron also has more detail than Sony's latest Exmor T48 megapixel stacked main sensor. 
Keep in mind, these used lenses cost only around $40 each, so I assume we are just at the low end of possible quality improvement here. I will also compare it to the latest iPhone and Samsung flagship soon. I really wonder how Samsung's optical zoom stands against it. In summary, I feel like this new approach could be best suited for photography enthusiasts, who are willing to carry around a bag of lenses and spend some effort maintaining and swapping them to get the most creative looks for their shots. C-mount lenses are smaller than regular camera lenses, the overall cost goes for a fraction of the price of a real camera and you still get a fully functional smartphone. You obviously lose water resistance, autofocus and make the camera bump twice as thick. So if you are only interested in quick point and shoots, it's probably not worth it. The best solution would be something like the previously mentioned Xiaomi 12s Ultra concept. It combines these two worlds into a single device, allowing you to always choose between a quick reliable point and shoot mode with a built-in lens and the best possible quality or unique image style with an external lens. I wonder how many people would actually buy such a device for an adequate price. But until such a smartphone is released and widely available, I'm excited to test the limits of the DIY approach. So tell me what you think about this concept and if you have any fresh ideas on how to improve it. Thank you for watching, until next time, take care and happy shooting!